we have just dealt with the phenomena of localized boiling. But we also need to examine the effect of a more severe heaving or piping, which involves a greater volume of soil becoming unstable. This occurs when the average upward seepage balances the downward gravity forces of the soil in front of the sheet pile wall as shown. Terzaghi has shown that the volume of soil involved in such movement is related to the depth of embedment D and normally extends to half the depth of embedment from the sheet pile wall. I should also state at this point that these calculations are normally associated with seepage through coarse grain soils and do not lead to very reliable results when applied to fine grain soils. The stability of soil in the region in front of the sheet pile can be determined from a flow net as follows. Consider the portion of the flow net on the downstream side of the sheet pile excavation. The effective weight of the soil prism W is equal to the submerged unit weight times D times D over 2. Considering the seepage force on the prism, we first calculate the mean total head acting on the base from the flow net. We note that the total head at the top of the prism is zero. Therefore the mean head loss through the prism is equal to h mean minus zero or simply h mean. From this we can calculate the mean hydraulic gradient by dividing h mean by d. Therefore the seepage force on the prism j is equal to the unit weight of water times i mean times v which is equal to the unit weight of water multiplied by h mean divided by d all multiplied by d times d over 2 which can be simplified. Now the factor of safety against a piping failure is given by the ratio of the effective weight over the seepage force and from this we can see that the submerged unit weight over the unit weight of water is I critical and D over H mean is the inverse of the mean hydraulic gradient. So the factor of safety is simply the critical hydraulic gradient over the mean hydraulic gradient. In the design of structures involving seepage, it's vital that the engineer is able to calculate the factor of safety against boiling and piping and that they have the experience to judge if these factors are adequate for the safety of the structure. Let's do a worked example involving both boiling and piping calculations. The specific gravity and voids ratio for the soil supporting the sheet pile wall shown are 2.65 and 0.6 respectively. We want to determine the factor of safety against boiling and piping. Firstly, we calculate ICR by substituting the values for GS and E into our relationship for the critical hydraulic gradient derived earlier. This gives us ICR equal to 1.03. Dealing with boiling first, we calculate the exit hydraulic gradient by dividing the drop in head between the last and the second last equipotentials by the average distance L1 between the equipotentials scaled from the flow net. This gives us an exit hydraulic gradient equal to delta H over L1. If delta H is equal to 0.33 meters and L1 is equal to 0.9 meters, the exit hydraulic gradient is equal to 0.37 and the factor of safety is equal to 2.8. Next we calculate the factor of safety against piping. Consider the prism of soil shown. We need to calculate the mean head HM acting along the base of the prism. We note from the enlarged detail that the lower outermost corner of the prism intersects equipotential line 9 and the internal corner touching the sheet pile intersects equipotential 8. This corresponds to 3 and 4 head drops respectively. So we can say the average or mean head along the base is equivalent to 3.5 head drops. So for a difference in total head of 4 meters, 
the mean head can be calculated as 3.5 drops divided by a total of 12 equipotential drops multiplied by 4 meters. And the mean hydraulic gradient is equal to H mean divided by the depth of the prism, giving I mean equal to 0.39 and hence a factor of safety equal to 2.6, which is lower than the factor of safety for boiling calculated for this element.